As we move forward to discover these eight types of missions that lightworkers do with their spiritual gifts, please know that it is not necessary to lump sum yourself into one category. It's very fluid. You might be doing two, three or more of these missions and it might change throughout your life. Maybe in your 20s, you're more of this type of uh, lightworker and then you shift into a different type of lightworker. So these are simply uh, indicators or uh, discovery points for you as you move forward in this beautiful ascension journey. The first type is the healers. The healers are the integrators of light and shadows. They help transform blockages individually and collectively. They feel very fulfilled as they grow alongside with the people that they service. So the first type of mission is being the healer. And the healers oftentimes would have gone through a very difficult uh, early years to learn to how to heal themselves as they move forward in their journey. And through this compassion and love and transformation, right, the wounded healer, they want to come out and they want to serve as a healer to help others that have struggled where they were a few years ago and to share with them tools, wisdom, and knowledge that will help them, right, come in back into a state of healing, wholeness, and authenticity. And so if healing sounds very good to you, there is so many types of healing available. There's breath work, there is tapping, EFT, there's crystal, Reiki, energy healing, spiritual healing. There's many forms of healings that you can look into and expand your gifts that way. The second type of mission is the teacher. These are natural born teachers and they are always very open and curious to seek more knowledge. They are relatable and can see a situation in many perspectives. So when someone is predominantly in the mission of being a teacher, you can think of someone like Matt Kahn. So Matt Kahn himself, right, makes videos where he's channeling his higher self. He's bringing forth these messages to help us heal our emotional body. So a teacher is generally someone that speaks and brings forth wisdom, information uh, for the collective to realize and to help us gain more awareness, gain more higher perspectives, more wisdom. They turn on the light bulbs within your consciousness, whereas a healer can dive into the shadows, right, to heal, resolve trauma, and then bring that light back into yourself. The teacher is very much like the ones that are the candlelight, and then they go forth and they lit up each person's light within themselves. So they are quite similar and oftentimes will overlap, but I find that uh, most teachers actually start out as healers. They work on themselves, right? Healing themselves, healing others, and then they become a teacher. Now, in terms of a teacher, there's many ways that you can be a teacher. It doesn't always have to do with spirituality, even if you're a light worker. Maybe you're very good at uh, farming. Maybe you're very good at gardening. Maybe you are very good at um, expressing yourself through art. So you can also be a teacher in this way. A teacher is someone that has spent the time to master a skill and would like to share the skills to other people. So never feel like you have to be a spiritual teacher as a light worker to be uh, aligned. You could be doing something else that help Mother Gaia. You could be teaching people about how to take better care of their pets. So there are so many skills that you can teach. So never feel like you have to put yourself inside a box. The third type of mission is the messenger. The messengers have highly activated upper chakras to channel love, light, and wisdom from the higher realm. And this go beyond clairvoyance. And these could be claircognizance, clairaudience, clairsentient. They are basically bridges that connect the physical with the spiritual world. And they are often indigo souls. They are very good leaders and agents of change. So the third type of missions are these change makers, paradigm shifters, and messengers. So uh, you might be the light worker that wants to share positive messages, want to share um, 
different knowledge and different messages that you've learned from other spiritual teacher that really helped you you feel like you're more like the you know the person that it's like the logistic person you take this information and then you give it to someone that would need it it's almost like you are that person that absorb all these messages and information short out which one would be helpful to that person and then share it to them so as a messenger, you're very connected to the higher realm. And sometimes I find that messengers themselves don't even know they are connected because many of them are very clear cognizance. They communicate through thought form, through energy. So sometimes they feel like they blocked, but it's not the case. It's just that they use their channeling abilities in a different way. So messengers are often uh, indigo souls as well. They have a message and they want to share. Maybe it's equality, maybe it's justice, maybe it's awareness. So they really have a message that they stand strong for and they really become that voice for those that cannot fully speak for themselves like animals. So messenger themselves, I find that oftentimes is very determinated they have a very strong conviction and that they are very determined to do to share the information that they are here to share they're here to create change and that sometimes really for you to really activate this messenger archetype it's important for you to come in alignment with the peaceful guardian warrior energy because a lot of times if you're a messenger if you're a messenger you're going um you're changing a system. You are trying to create a new system while you're still in the old system. So at times, you it can be a lot for your mental and emotional bodies. So it's really important for you to come into that peaceful warrior, peaceful guardian. Still have that strength, right? To protect yourself, have the boundary and assertiveness. But at the same time, having that aspect of peace and harmony to know that you can create this new paradigm, new earth, using very high vibrational messages and techniques. The fourth type of mission is the alchemists. So they work really well with the elements, earth, water, fire, air, space. They adapt at manifesting. So they are manifesting generators and they are very good at being resourceful to uplift difficult situations. The good gets better and the better gets brighter. So the alchemists are basically like wizards. <laughs> They can take anything and be able to shift it into a different state. You might have or you might be the person or know someone that feels like whatever life thrown at them, they always find a way out. They always have resources. They never feel like they are stuck in a certain place. They always seem to have that natural fire, that natural drive to create change. So these are the alchemists and they also, if you're an alchemist, you will probably feel very connected to the elements. Maybe you work in something with water. Maybe you are very connected to nature, animals, magic, right? When it comes to magic, we really work with the elements. So uh, you might be very drawn to green magic, white magic, working with these elementals like fairies, dragons, and really exploring how the elements come together to manifest this physical form. So the alchemists themselves are very good at transformation. They are very good at being the catalyze, the catalyst as well. So they create this facilitation, this catalyzing movement for themselves and for other people. The fifth mission is the grid masters. And the grid masters are very good at moving energy or chi. They work with Gaia's grid line on the collective level and systems such as the meridian lines individually. So at the time that I'm doing this video, I'm finding that more and more grid masters are awakening to their purpose. And grid master, I find that they often time very connected uh, and grounded to earth. When you're around a grid master, you just feel more grounded. <laughs> They are very connected to the ley lines, the grid lines. If you're a grid master, you will work really well with sacred geometry. You will also be very, at times, because there's such 
a stable connection to the grid, you might feel like your life is not moving forward fast enough. But that's not quite true, because the grid masters, ever since Lemurian time, and I've read past lives of grid masters, they have done grid work in Atlantis, Lemuria, and they use these grids to raise the vibration of the planet. It's very much like some crop circles. It's uh, created to raise the vibration and activate our consciousness. So a grid master uh, has been incarnating for a long time. Together as a team has been creating this crystalline uh, grid line of the fifth dimensional Gaia. Right? We, we need people to create that grid line right, for us to move into that um, timeline. So the grid master is very important as well. I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, I'm not a healer, so I'm not as important. That's not true. Like we need to work as a team, right? <laughs> it's like a clockwork. Without one part, the picture cannot uh, come together, right? So as a grid master, you also are very good at working with people through energy, especially helping them align and move their chi, their meridian lines. So if you're an energy worker and you have been working on people already, they might be able to feel very much so the meridian lines being opened. And at times you feel that you are drawn to help heal Mother Earth. So grid masters are here to be the architects right, to create those grid lines. Um, the grid master I also find will receive these um, light codes from key holders, which I'll talk about later, and they will help merge and harmonize these light codes in the grid line. They're basically the caretaker of the grid lines, right? They take care of Mother Earth's grid line, and they're also very good at moving energy in the individual basis. The sixth mission is the creators. The creators feel most at ease when they are in the creative process through writing, art, movement, and beyond. They are innovators. They bring forth new ideas. They bring forth healing to the planet through the energy they infuse into their work. And they are also highly sensory as well. So creators are the artists of the world. What would the world be like without art? So the creators in themselves, and I feel that we really don't do them justice in this realm right now. The artists and the creators, filmmakers are so important to our evolution. They are the ones that bring forth all of these beautiful knowledge that they receive from their soul and they express it in a very tangible form like art, painting, sculptures. And these are all subtle energy fields that activates our consciousness. So they are literally taking physical, uh, sorry, spiritual energy, their soul's energy and manifesting it into a physical form. So the creators themselves brings forth a lot of new ideas, a lot of joy, a lot of inspiration, happiness for everyone around them. And being a creator is really important. And I just want to say that I love supporting local artists. So if you're an artist feeling like, oh, nobody's going to appreciate my work or I can't make any money from it, there's light workers out there that will support your work. <laughs> In my living room, it's just full of prints of like local, local artists. And there are some of us that appreciate your work. So don't let the 3D programming tell you, oh, artists don't make money. That's not true. So when you're aligned, if this is your passion, there's always a way to manifest abundance. So if this is your calling, if you have art that you want to share, share it. If it's more sacred to you, that's okay too. Maybe it's just for you, just for you to enjoy, that's okay too. But don't be afraid to embrace that artist, that creator within you. I also noted that um, the creators are highly sensory because as a creator, you're always receiving inspiration from the universe. So it's important for you to ground. And um, I find that that's why a lot of artists work with texture because that really helps them ground into the space and help anchor those light frequency from their soul into this physical realm. The seventh mission is the beacons and they have a remarkable presence very much like the rainbow children. Just being around them makes you smile and feel very happy. 
They have a great sense of humor and a quality of purity and innocence. They tend to be positive and likes to have fun and explore. So these are the beacons of light. I have talked to some light workers that feel like, well, what is my purpose? I don't feel like I want to heal people. I'm happy with my job. I don't feel like I need to do this advanced spiritual work. Like, what am I here to do? And oftentimes they are these beacons. They are these glowing lights, like sparkles and confettis <laughs> that are here to anchor the vibration of joy and happiness not only for uh, themselves but for the people around them and for other light workers as well right so they are like the cheerleaders and i often find that these beacons of light are also very much like creators as well they would like to create things that make people happy maybe uh, funny videos silly videos and so you'll find that more and more of these star seeds that are coming in the star seed children are very much like the beacons they just want to make other people happy where right? they want to just share uh, good energy around them the eighth mission is the key holders. Um, they often work in their own space and time connecting directly to source or Gaia. They astral travel to different dimensions to bring healing or light codes and they often love nature. So the key holders, the key holders is literally like the title. They hold light codes, healing codes, light codes. They're like walking USB sticks and <laughs> So if the grid master is the motherboard, the key holders are the USB sticks. And I find that if you're a key holder, you tend to astro travel a lot. So you go into the Fey realm, you go into the um, angelic realm, you go into different realms and different lifetimes that you've had multidimensionally, basically plug in, download the codes, come back to earth, and then download it to the grid line. And then the grid master will feel these energy and work with these energies and merge it with the rest of the grid. And then people like healers or the creators, right, would tap into the grid line and pull these light codes and express it in their own ways. So you see that we all work as, as a team here. And uh, key holders, I find, the ones I've met so far, are more to themselves. They don't feel like they need to get out here and um, be in the you know spotlight of being the public they find that i find that they are more like to themselves they have really beautiful energy but they often misunderstood by people and they find a lot of connection with nature and so if you are someone that feel like you're always all over the place <laughs> you're probably a key holder so with the key holder you definitely need to ground for sure because you're always troubling and if it becomes too intense just tell your higher self or your guides that i need a break or i need to rejuvenate i need to let my physical body rest so that's key holders and key holders have had they are all souls they've been here for a long time different star system they plugging in you know getting these galactic consciousness and light codes onto earth right so that we can move into the new earth and align to that frequency and so all of these eight missions are very important and you might have a lot of them like for myself i feel like oh yeah i'm like a healer teacher i feel like i'm an alchemist and at times i'm a creator so these energies can change right during the day or you know today you're more the healer tomorrow you're more the teacher so it's really important for you to embrace these missions and to receive these spiritual gifts and abilities to really help you anchor yourself into these missions and i hope that this video have given you some insights or affirmations about what you have experiencing maybe you have been like oh so that's what that dream meant oh so that's what i'm doing <laughs> And if you're looking for more support, I do offer private sessions where we connect with the Akash, your spirit guides, and to download these spiritual readings and upgrades to help you find more clarity. I also offer courses and training programs as well. So if you feel that I can be of service to you, please feel free to reach out to me.
I am happy to be here with you today. Thank you so much for your light and the work that you do. I definitely appreciate it. Even if you are at this time in your life where you feel like your light work is not appreciated, please know that other light workers see you. You're not alone and we appreciate your light and we honor your existence in this realm. So let's go out there and shine our light together. Sending you lots of love and lots of light.